he can't, he can't, for, he can't for, he's, and, he's, and, he's, and Scott Higgins, both of them coked up out of their minds. <laughs> Ah, listen to you. <laughs> Down in the basement. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I think we should call this the acement. The acement, yes. yes. What do you oh. think there, huh? I like that. I the acement you. studios. Oh. Excuse me, I'm drinking beer. Hold on a second. We, we usually drink bourbon on our end <laughs> yeah, right. the podcast, so That's all right. feel free to enjoy yourself. Yeah, exactly. You, you shoot an eight ball if you want. We don't care, as long as it's good stories. <laughs> and welcome to the Ace with everybody. It's time to go behind the funny. This is Scott Higgins. And this is Ace Acido messing with Scott Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> the production engineer of the Wednesday Night Live Yes, show. which is why we're late. Yes, <laughs> the Wednesday Night Live. Because someone was out with their friends. I know. Someone gets very upset someone when someone's was out with their friends. Out with their friends golfing. once again. As you could tell, I didn't even change. I didn't even have time. I didn't even have time to change. Holy shit. I, I, yeah, I know. Literally. I'm not even drinking. Literally yet. ran in at the last second. That's why he can't talk right now. Yes. But for everyone that's joining us live on thank our you. Wednesday night recording, thank you so much for tuning in. Mm -hmm. If you haven't joined us live, if you're listening and you'd like to watch us record an episode, we'd love to have you. Uh, Twitch.tv slash drinks, jokes and storytelling. That's the letter N storytelling is where we are every Wednesday night or follow us on Facebook at behind the funny you can see when we're going to be recording live and you can join in and watch the show chat with us live ask questions you know poke fun at us whatever you want to do play along with the drinking game that we have every week when a says to your point when i say 100 percent, grab your drink of choice and drink along with us and our drink of choice this week How's that for a segue? That's why I set you up, my Our friend. Drink of choice. Our this bourbon week date is Res, uh, Russell's, Russell's Reserve. Ten year. Ten year. Uh, very, very good. This was last week's date, and yep. we decided to bring him we, or her we, back. We we're having a second date. With it's her. a they. That's her pronoun. Yeah, because it's pronoun. got an S at the end. Because it's, it's Russell's. Uh, anyway, yes, Clinkies. Clinkies, but we friend. are so excited to have our guest. Oh, my Not goodness. Not only are we excited to have our guest, mm. we're excited to have him in studio. Yes. You may oh. remember him from a couple of seasons ago. For our loyal listeners. When, you know, we love to name our episodes <laughs> by something that comes up during the episode and quite possibly <laughs> one of the best episode <laughs> top title. three definitely definitely a top three was dragonflies will sew your mouth well shut, shut. <laughs> and since then <laughs> this guy i mean look he's been a hilarious comic for a very long time but he's one of those guys that has been able to adjust to different medium and mm. has become an uh, i won't even say an overnight just a TikTok, youtube and reels sensation and mm -hmm. we are so glad to have Mr. Rodney Norman, mm -hmm. life coach. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> life coach on Join Behind the Funny. I, it's funny because we were upstairs right before we started the show, and Rodney was talking. I go, wait a minute. That's your real voice? Because I'm... <laughs> I'm so used to doing the impression of you for my kids. I'm like, yeah, so anyway, mm. just get over it, you know. Uh, so, um, okay, so uh, what, okay, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I lose it every time you come um, on. I told you upstairs. I don't know what makes me it, laugh more. The voice or the, the dancing video, which you haven't done in a while. You haven't done the... Yeah, I'm t I, I need to do more dancing videos because <laughs> they're great. I really do. Now, with the popularity that you've had, especially on <clears throat> like TikTok and Reels and stuff like that, uh -huh. if you go somewhere to perform and you run into someone that never seen you live or never saw you outside of your videos and they see you maybe talk like you're talking tonight does it throw them off a little bit i i, I think some of them <laughs> yeah I think some of them, my true diehard fans who 
came yeah. to see me for sure. Yeah. They they figured it out. Yeah, you know, of course. I, mean, I don't hide it. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, I have had those people who have met, you know, seen me in public, and when they hear my real voice, they're kind of like, "Are you sure you're you?" <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, they probably it's think like, this is the character. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Is, yeah, I'm actually I'm trying to act normal now, <laughs> yeah, right, so that exactly. I blend in with society. <laughs> That's so, it's yeah. been it, I cannot get over just how many times you come up on my now I follow you, obviously, but you just come up on my for you page. You come up on my Facebook on reels all the time. Yeah, it's yeah. how did you. How did you first of all, was that a character that you were thinking of for a while? It's almost like well, it's, it's a wisdom life coach type of thing, but. Well, laid back and yeah well the, the 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 original incarnation of it was um from my grandfather he was a kind of a lush alcoholic okay and so he would get sloshed uh, his favorite drink was scotch yep and he would he would like get him already sloshed. we can't blame him <laughs> <laughs> i mean he was just kind of one of those he just you know he's old and retired he and he speech. just he was just always a lush just always yeah. some form of drunkenness yeah but he would always want to teach me and my cousin life lessons. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like one time I remember I was at his house and there was this huge uh, her, uh, uh, earthquake in Mexico City. Millions of people died. I mean, it was this wow. big thing. And uh, I remember sitting there watching that with him. I said, that's really sad. And he goes, ah, don't feel sorry for them. They got all the answers now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to put it into perspective. <laughs> you know, it was, and, oh my god! But he would he would teach he would he, he, I remember, he was a, he was Scotch he was uh, yeah and um, he uh, he told me one day he goes uh, Rodney he, do you know you know what a true Scotsman wears under their kilt and I'm like uh the grandpa I don't think they wear anything <laughs> oh no we tried that for a while but we got tired of our dicks dragging in the dirt. <laughs> So now we just wear matching underwear. <laughs> oh my god! I was, I was like eight. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You know? yeah like yeah. I don't know if I should hear this. Grandpa. Definitely not at an age that you should be hearing <laughs> yes. that. But yeah. I just love this man. I would sit at the kitchen table. He would tell us these stories. Of, he was a railroad engineer for most of his life. Yeah, he would run back. His his main thing was he would pick up uh, coal from the coal mines in Utah and then take it to a, a steel factory. Yeah, Geneva Steel. And that was his main thing. And he had all kinds of crazy stories and he was always sharing with us, but you know, he was drunk half the time. Yeah. So he would just wander off onto these other weird tangents. And right. then all of a sudden out of nowhere, he would say something brilliant, call us knuckleheads and kick us out of the house. <laughs> go play, go right. play. You got to go outside. Yeah. I, I and, think guys of that generation were just good storytellers because you know, you gotta, you gotta think they didn't grow up with electronics and TV oh, and yeah. all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. So they were just natural Good, very good storytellers. Well, I remember my great grandfather who came over on the boat from the Ireland, uh -huh. and he would just hold court telling yeah. stories. Oh, yeah, he, <clears throat> yeah, it, that, was a, it was amazing. That was yeah. just what their generation. Well, because did. that was that was your entertainment. Right. Was your elders right. telling you stories? Yeah. You didn't. Yeah. You didn't have TV or movies or you know. Well, you had movies, but you didn't have as much. So it was stories that were passed down generation to generation yeah. that yeah. were you know changed and obviously but first time i heard people using the f word was my great grandfather and his best friend tuck sitting there having drinks and that word started flying back and forth <laughs> and there's my my grandmother his daughter and my mother go, like you can't keep saying that the kids are here we're all sitting on the floor like this yeah, right. and it's Tell just us fuck more. This and fuck yeah. that going back and forth and we're like oh yeah. my god these stories are awesome yeah. what is what is this magic word yeah. yes right it means everything and yeah. yet nothing it, it's yeah. anger it's happiness yeah. it's an adjective it's a it's, it's a verb it's, it's a, a verb noun. it's everything yeah. it's exactly. every emotion yes. you could possibly have really, all in one beautiful word i, I really couldn't is. follow the story when they were using it but i knew <laughs> it was something exciting it really is the most versatile little word in the english yeah. language yeah. right it was it was unbelievable but i mean you have how many followers now on tiktok um i i'm real i'm really just about to go over six hundred thousand. that's awesome. that's awesome yeah man. yeah that's amazing and and it's just by what so did you set out like a plan to get on tiktok and say all right i'm gonna put out content 
every day, two times a day, or or did it just kind of organically happen? It just well, the, the character, you know, like I said, I was yeah. talking about my, my grandfather, and I, I've always mm -hmm. I've done versions of him on stage. Yeah, you know, when I'm tired right. or bored, I'll just start doing the act as my <laughs> right. My half, you know, is, uh, drunk, you know, grandfather. And then one day, one day, I'm watching Instagram. I have a friend who's one of these gurus. You yeah, know, and he's. You know, he's got the beautiful wife and the big house and yeah. fancy cars and tan, his perfect body, and he just sounds perfect and he's just got always the right thing to say. Yeah. And you watch his videos and no one, you know, it's one of those as soon as you see it, you go, ah, oh, this guy doesn't relate to me at all. Yeah. Right. Right. Even though what he's saying is interesting. You right. Know, he's good. He's yeah. saying something positive and he's trying to, but motivate like, people. Yeah. You're like, ah, I don't want to listen to you. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's so, not a regular guy. Yeah. You're just like, you, you don't relate to me at all. Right. I don't relate to you, but he's sitting there and he's leaning against the wall in his hallway and he says, Hey, you know, if you, you feel like you want to be successful, but you don't feel like you deserve to be successful. I'm here to give you permission to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a motivational yeah. guru yeah right yeah, yeah. And it just starts making me laugh and i'm going and that's when it just clicked i was like that's it my drunk grandfather as a world's worst motivation saying speaker, yes saying the shit my friend says right. that no one relates to but they'll relate to my grandfather yeah right and so that's why i started doing i started working on these videos right this, this character and i was doing it on stage sometimes and, mm -hmm. and did okay you know, when I first started doing it, but um, my comedy and everything started going and it was <clears throat> things were happening. And yeah. then, you know, COVID hit. Yeah. And now there I'm, you know, what do I do? Right, right, right. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to start playing around with this character and just really develop start, it kind more. Of really develop, you know, yeah, you turn finally it into his own thing. Because you know? you're not traveling all over doing shows, you've got the time to devote yeah. to this one thing. Yeah, right. You've got a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> And so I started doing the video. I've been doing it for a few months and yeah, you know, just putting one out one or two out a week. And yeah. Just kind of developing it. And I was trying to put together a whole thing. And then one day, uh, I'm getting ready to fly from Connecticut to to Utah. Utah. And when I fly, usually I wear bib overalls. <laughs> Because I don't have to wear a belt. Right? Yep. It's got all the pockets. So I can put all my stuff when I'm yep. flying. It's right here. Right, know? right. And so I'm wearing these bib overalls and wait for my wife to come out so my son can drive us to the airport. And I'm sitting there in the car and I'm fiddling around on Facebook. And this is about the time of the uh, George Floyd riots. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. And <clears throat> one of my friends is a comic also. He posts this just, you know, sarcastic thing says hey does anybody have an opinion about what's going on nobody seems to be talking about it right yeah, at right at that point everybody's of all course everybody, yeah. You know, uh, yeah everybody everybody's on social media this time right so it's just a fight you know power cake going off and so I'm, I'm i'm reading through some of the comments and i was going to write something i i don't even remember what i was going to write but i'm starting to write and i thought no nah, i should do a video yeah and that's when i did the one where I, so my idea was my character trying to explain the George Floyd riots without offending anybody. Yep. <laughs> and so yeah. that was my goal. That was that my was motivation. It. Yep. And so then I started, going, okay, so the first thing you got to remember, okay, so these guys are like, oh, I don't think they should be doing that. And then other people are like, I don't think they should be doing that. Either. Well, I think they should be doing that. Right? <laughs> and then, okay. And so then they were like, um, okay. Okay, so what I'm trying to say, okay, in conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. I have no idea. You made no point whatsoever. No point right. whatsoever. <laughs> and again, the idea was to explain the George Floyd riots without offending anyone. Right, and that's perfect, because and, how could you offend anyone if you really didn't say anything? <laughs> right, there was no point to it. And, you know, it was one of those moments where I, as soon as I was done, I said, that's the stupidest thing I've ever done. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there's and millions like, of likes. And I was like, okay, I'm posting it. So I posted it as a comment to his his thing. Yeah. It got like six likes. Yeah. And uh, and as we're, we, my wife comes out, we hop in the car and we started driving to the airport. And I thought, you know, that's so stupid. I should put it on my page. Yeah. So I went and posted it. Didn't think anything of it. Usually you post these things, you get 30 yeah. likes, maybe two shares. Right. You know. Everybody forgets. You hop on a plane to Utah, right? <laughs> by, the, by the time, well, we, we had a layover in uh, Dallas. Yep. 
by the time I got to Dallas, the video was at over a hundred thousand. Oh wow. Holy like, shit. Holy crap. Yeah. Right. And then we get to Salt Lake. It's gone up another 200,000. Wow. And then over the next week, it just, just kept climbing, climbing, climbing within a week, it hit a million. Wow. And then uh, all of these other people started re-memeing it. Right. Yeah. And so at one point in time <clears throat> within, within a month, it was over 300 million views, all wow. different versions. Oh, holy shit. And right now there's probably, probably three or 400 different versions of it. Cause people will download it and do something to it. And yeah. Put it back yeah. Right. Right. Or they'll and stitch it or they'll, they'll take the the audio or they'll take yeah. the audio from it and do their yeah, yeah. lip sync to you doing it. Wow. Yeah. And so that, and that was back before TikTok was even really a right. Deal. Yeah. yeah. And so that thing took off and then people started trying to figure out who this was Yeah, and trying to find me. And so they would come and stumble across my other stuff and, yep. then, and the things that they gravitated to was this character. That character, right. His name's right. Leonard McCrunsky. <laughs> well, I, I, I love when <clears throat> Leonard is trying to make a point and he kind of runs uh, <sighs> Out of words, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or his thoughts aren't quite there, so he's got to pause. The- yeah, <sighs> so in, and that's when so, you go. So in conclusion, <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite yeah. moment yeah. in all of those. This is when you get to that point where you just, just kind of stop, and just <sighs> just let out that. But breath. talk about lightning striking because you're you hit that at the perfect time yeah, like yeah. you said oh we did it was i ever there was so much tension going on yeah you know, and this is what people have told me they said they were so they had so much anxiety and they were so depressed and yeah they just because they were trapped in the house and they couldn't yep. they, they, nobody knew what was going on then right. all these riots are going on and it's like it just seems the whole world's just going nuts crazy yeah and then all of a sudden here's this weird dude in the middle of the forest <laughs> yep yep <clears throat> And it was so ridiculous that it was like I, I had people who said that was the first time I'd laughed in months. People were just looking for entertainment. And it's it's funny because I wish I had thought of using TikTok at the time because I started doing the cooking show at mm-hmm. that time. And when I look back at how many people were watching at that time, I was getting tons of views, but it was a half hour show. It wasn't yeah, a quick yeah. hit. Now, but you could have broke it up into clips. I could have, yeah. but but now I look at it and, you know, so a couple of months ago, a local market uh, sponsored me for about a uh, through Lent mm-hmm. for six weeks and I did recipes and and it would get views. It would get a lot of views, but it wasn't getting the interaction that I was getting. Yeah. But then I so I started getting bummed about it. And then I'm like, wait a minute. People were trapped in their house with nothing better to do. They have lives now. They're working. Yeah, they've moved they've on. got they've got they've moved on exactly. But because yours was in this quick, you know, 20 or 30 second video, it that's people's attention span. They can't devote a half hour to watching me cook something. Yeah. But they can devote 30 seconds to something. Yeah. So you're right. I should probably try and edit them down. Well, you, you have to think of it. I, I think of the TikTok and the reels is just basically commercials. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. For, yeah. So I'll give it a little nugget and they, yep. they get, they dig it. And then once they buy into the character and get into his, you know, his weird manner, then they want thing, more, then they want more. Right. Then they'll sit and they'll watch the longer videos. Right. And right. Watch. And so I use those to drive, drive the traffic, traffic to to the youtube the longer versions of everything well and then i'm sure by then people also discover your stand-up which is probably yeah. helped with packing clubs when you're going through these yeah. different cities right oh uh, yeah what do you use it as a credit now oh yeah <laughs> i would oh yeah i would yeah, you could so tiktok sensation you know well it's funny when they find out <clears throat> i am a stand-up Right, like, right. What, you do live show? What? Yeah, I can you know? see this live. <laughs> yeah, right. What I I get what I'm finding a lot of my audience when they come and see me. I'm the first comedy show they've ever been to. Really? I mean, it's a That's new great. audience. So. Well, and you know what? We've talked about it before that comedy clubs have booked people that are huge YouTube social sensations. media sensations yeah. mm-hmm. but aren't comics per yeah. se they created funny online content and they'll book them 
to headline a weekend and they really don't have any live content. And because yeah. we we've had friends that open up for them, but really that comic is carrying the show that night because right. yeah. the, these these uh, people, social media people don't have anything to much to do live. You kind of are that double jeopardy thing where you're giving them the social media content they love. They come to a comedy show that they've never really seen before, but you can deliver a real comedy show right. as yeah. well. Right. Yeah. And I've I've had to do a lot of the shows where I'm doing a, where it's just me. You know, I'm I can't really? even finding the openers. Really? And so I'm doing an hour and a half, two hours by myself. Dude, bring us and on it's, tour. It's so we'll go out. Uh, we'll go out with you. To. Hello. <laughs> but, so now let me ask you this, because you talk about Connecticut and Utah. So do you live in both places? Well, or I, do you... I had been. We had a yeah. house in Utah because my son <clears throat> lived there. Yep. So and we had gotten a house there because I was going to school. My kids were going to school mm -hmm. here in college in Utah. But uh, we've recently, uh, my son's, you know, graduated, graduated. Married, moved on. And and uh, so we've closed out that house in yeah. Utah. So now we just have the home in Connecticut. But I we see. still have a lot of connection, a lot of family in Utah. Right, right. I got a so daughter still in Colorado. There. So I'm still kind of all over the place. Right, right. Yeah, well, because when we originally booked you, we had you for last week. And you were like, hey, I don't think I'm going to be back in time. Can, yeah, can yeah, we I push was, it yeah, was, further out? I was in South Dakota. I, hey, don't so, brag. So yeah. rub your success. Go ahead, rub face. it in. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, oh, South Dakota. Sioux City. South Dakota. Sexy How was it? South yeah, actually, Dakota. didn't you post Mount some Rushmore? <laughs> Was it was it South Dakota or somewhere else where you said uh, where you posted? I don't mean to brag, but I'm playing in this building, and it was like this big long industrial building that was like a VFW hall or something. It was like last week sometime. Yeah, it was the was American it? Legion in Stewartville. <laughs> he posted it. He goes, I don't mean to brag, but I'm at the American Legion at Stewartville, the palatial Stewartville across hey, from listen. the Ready Mix plant. It's it's. <laughs> work it's work that's all that matters man you're getting work you know what sometimes those are the you know, best gigs and the oh, best was, audience oh absolutely awesome. exactly yeah. yeah i had people that drove uh two hours from wow. minneapolis to come to that show to come to the so show it was just it's so amazing the fans are just amazing we had a guy this blew my mind i did a couple shows in michigan last uh october uh -huh. there was a guy who flew in from nebraska right he flies in and he comes to a show that's in a bowling alley. Right. <laughs> Did John Parada book that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I beat well, you to it. <laughs> you would, I was swallowing. You would, you would think so, but there was only two comics on the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's definitely not a Parada. The comedians okay. didn't yeah. outnumber the audience. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't. love you, John. We love yes, you, we John. Do. <laughs> yes, we do. Well, anyway. But this guy had flown from Nebraska to the show, and I mean, he sat there. He, he came. He got or got there early because he wanted to be able to, you know, talk to me. And, yep. Wow. And I'm going, why? why? <laughs> yeah, right. And he said, "Look, I." He said, "Look, this last year, one of the worst years of my life." He yeah. said, "You know, I broke up with my wife. She left me. She took the kids. My oh. business fell apart." He says, "I just." My life was a disaster. He says, yeah. I, I was really considering just you know, cashing it all in. Really? And he says, well, I watched a couple of your videos. <laughs> and I just said, what the hell am I doing? Right, right. I'm sitting here, you know, filming. There's star good for in this world, too. There's so much more I could be doing. Right. And he said, wow. he just, he said he just pulled him out of his funk. And he turned around. He actually um, resurrected his business, and it yep. turned out to go even better than better. it had before. Wow. He was That's making amazing. more money. He met a hotter, younger chick. Wow! That he's just absolutely adores. And, and imagine, and, and that's the pro that's the was, sad part about yeah. suicide, is that people don't realize six months down the road it's going to get better. A yeah. year down the road it's going to get better. All they need to do is look themselves in the mirror and go. Yeah, so I just just move, you know, so I just, I just move on and get over it, and uh, that's it. So, have your little pity party. You yeah, move on. on. That's <laughs> it. The pity party. <laughs> you know what? You're doing. You do these videos, and you're just hoping to make people laugh and yeah. make them smile at some point in the day. But you don't know 
what about kind that of impact. one person yeah. that you make that type of impact on right you know that yeah. one guy that's sitting there going like like he said i'm gonna cash it in screw it what is this and he <laughs> happens to watch right. it and it, it's really funny because I've, I've had so right many place people, right time i've had so many people that just tell me they say i don't know why i don't know what it is yeah but I, I watched the video and it just it just pulled me it's out of uplifting. my face. It was yeah. like just this switch when I was like, okay, I can be, I'm done being mad can, and depressed. You know why? And, because you're literally telling them to get over themselves. Yes, yeah. But in a funny way yeah. that make that disarms them. Like they don't get defensive about it. Like, who the fuck is this guy I, I telling know. me to get over <laughs> yeah. myself? Yeah. Because it's such a funny character. That's it's almost it. like he's saying, why are you being stupid? And right. Worrying about this Yeah, crap. you're pointing out. on. Yeah, you're that's pointing weird. it and, out. And, but you're doing it in the this way that's a lot more gentle than saying it that way and and silly and and yeah, yeah. makes him realize yeah he's right it's just, and it's just a character yeah right. it's, it's just, great it's almost like it's as if jim gaffigan took his hot pocket or the inner voice character yeah, yeah. and created TikTok a whole character you know what i mean it's I, I scroll through through videos on tiktok all the time i ace one i forget when a year and a half ago so yeah show me some videos on tiktok and i'm like ah, i should join the, there's probably some funny stuff on there and then i follow like gaffigan i love some, yeah, his yeah. clips and i'm fun, following some other stuff and then I, I i started following you when i saw you were on there and there are certain ones like when i see when i scroll to the next one i see your face i just all right i already smile yeah because i'm like all right i can't wait to watch this <laughs> You know, because what is it? What is this? Because he's got the next? blank stare. Yes. He's got the hair going crazy. Yes. You know, it's he, just certain ones just instantly bring a smile to your face because you're like, oh, OK, what is he yeah, gonna this is going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, upstairs, too. I don't know what makes me laugh more. The dancing ones. Or the one where you're, it's almost like, remember Grover? This is near. <laughs> yes. And this is far. Near. <laughs> far. But, <laughs> but you see him way, way in the distance and he's like, hey, hey. Yeah. And he comes running up. And he jumps on the ground and he's out of breath. And he's like, <sighs> I forgot what it's going to say. So uh, have a good day. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. It's so simple, but it's, it's so goofy they're fun. and funny, and they're that's so what's great fun. about them. You know, it's it's I, just just learning how to take yourself so serious. That's I mean, it. That's all it is. That, I'm but just, but just you willing to be a goofball. Just. But, but you do it in a very disarming way. Like I said, I think you know there are probably people that are watching your videos that are on the brink, and your way of saying get over it is such a disarming way that it probably you know. Well, what he just Good Samaritans is probably showing everyone what he just said is the best point. Yeah. Don't take yourself so serious. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Don't yeah. take any of this serious. Exactly. Nothing, nothing that that was a, is that serious. That was yeah. a, that was a great way to put it is you're not taking yourself too seriously. So the people on the other end, whatever you got going on, don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. Right. Just but, take a breath. Yeah. Because, you know, you look, especially with social media, you know, everything, yeah. everybody's trying to be perfect. And this is one of the things right. when I really started getting into all this. You know, I started looking you know, how do I make myself stand out in the mark with all this stuff? Right. I started reading all this stuff and everything they're telling you, oh, be sure you practice and rehearse and write it out and have better lighting, have good lighting, have good sound, good, make sure your hair is perfect, blah, 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 you know, all these, and make sure everything's perfect, how to yeah. make it perfect, yeah. perfect editing, use this uh, software. Right, uh, right. Post it this time of day. And, uh, it's a full-time uh, job. Hashtag this, that, this. And I, and I was sitting there going, okay, this is what everybody else is doing. I'm, I'm going to do something I'm different. just going to keep doing it wrong yeah yeah right right <laughs> you know that makes you stand i'm gonna out. do the opposite yeah. i'm gonna yeah. do everything wrong yeah. and that became my just because you, you know in my mind my character and leonard is this genius who doesn't think every anything that everybody else thinks is important he doesn't think it's important right the, right the way you look the way you sound the way the everything, right it's not important you know in fact, when I make up, when I screw up halfway through the stuff, half the mm -hmm. time, because uh, most of it's just all, it's improv. just off. The, yeah. Right. It's yeah. off the cuff. And instead of stopping going, Oh, I can say that better. I, I don't, I, I remember one of the earlier videos I did, you know, with the pandemic, I was talking about, you know, the trying to cope with everything. And in the middle of it, I just started having this coughing fit. <laughs> I mean, just, start, I just, just, couldn't, couldn't stop, coughing. stop coughing and it goes on for like 30 seconds to a minute i think it was just i just think i coughing. remember that when you <laughs> and i'm thinking to myself okay should i, I should i should redo, redo it yeah. and then i thought halfway through the cough i'm going oh absolutely not this is gold right it adds authenticity to right. it 
Yes. It, yeah. And then when I start coughing, I just go right back to what I was yeah, saying. Exactly. I didn't even acknowledge the cough yeah, right. at all. Because that's just, what he would really do. That's right. It. It's yeah. unimportant. Yes. Whatever. Yeah. Know? yeah. That's the authenticity. It's like if he grew up in the middle of it, he'd throw up and come back and right, start yeah. talking. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was it was actually that video where I was like that. That was an important part of this character was that none of this matters. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. I look yeah, like, the, if it sounds right. good, right, it doesn't matter. In fact, one of the videos that I've, I did recently that I think it's the biggest one I've done on TikTok. Really? It's like 10 million views i mean it's wow. still going it's that thing those, is still going. those numbers are just staggering <laughs> staggering oh yeah <laughs> i do fucking i i got on tiktok i haven't done anything in a long time but there was this uh, there was this uh impressions app where you could it would you would do an impression you would make a video of yourself doing an impression and you could pick that person's face, face. It was like a deep fake yeah. thing yeah. yeah right so i've got like four or five of them up there i got like three likes on each one but when i show people they're like wow that's really good i'm like yeah i don't know how the fuck to get it out there i, don't, I oh, really it, don't I, it's like, it's so crazy oh, how yeah. random well, it is right well yeah this this one okay so i'm in california <clears throat> and i had to do i had to go find this house and take pictures of this cabin up in the up on the top of this mountain mm -hmm. And so I'm driving around you know, with my GPS and I get to this place and there's like, it's like a cul-de-sac, but then there's two roads that kind of shoot off of mm -hmm. it. And in the middle of these two roads, there's this sign that says, your GPS is wrong. You're not supposed to be here. I've seen those Go back kind to of the maps. main road. Yeah. You're looking for this, this other place. Yeah. And that, that sign got me thinking about how many times do you you have to but if i hadn't gotten here i would still think i was in the right place right, right. yeah but now that i'm here now that i know oh, okay i i want to go, go there. there but i had to be here i had to see this to know <clears throat> right that the gps is wrong and so as i'm drive, i drive back over and i get the i see the house i need to and as i'm driving back out to the thing i'm coming around this corner and i look out and i see this beautiful you know vista of the the valley and the mm -hmm. ocean in the background. I was just like, this is a perfect place to make a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I, I pull over and I'm standing there and I'm thinking, what should I talk about? And I was, I was thinking about that sign. I was like, you know, you end up going places. I never would have found this. If, yeah. Yeah. I was like, um, sometimes you go where you think you want to go and find out it's not where you want to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you got to do it because if you don't go there, then you're always going to want to get there. And so it's always going to be in your mind that that's where you wanted to be. But until you get there, you don't know that's not where you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's so <laughs> simple. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Right. <laughs> and so, so I pull out the phone and I make that video and, and I say it the wrong way at the end. Uh -huh. You know, I say, well, sometimes you go where you're, I was trying to say, sometimes you go where you want to go to find out that's not where you want to be. But I ended up saying, sometimes you end up going where you don't want to go to know that's not where you want to be. So it was kind of, kind of muff, muffled. It made even less sense than you yes. meant. Right. Yeah. And then I, I done and I'm and I'm thinking, oh, should I reshoot it? And I thought, no, because my rule is that the stupider, if I dislike it, the more I dislike doing it, yeah, the more likely, the more it's likely it's going to blow up, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so then I thought, oh, this is so stupid. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to post it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it hit one million views within 24. Hours. Holy shit! Wow. <laughs> I mean, it just, just launched it's and it's still just got, you know, right. thousands, it's still just going and going and chugging away. Wow. Do you, oh have you God. ever had it where you're in the middle of a video and you just crack yourself up and you, you or you want to laugh? Because and, I'm sitting you're like, watching I can't, the video I can't and I'm like, I'm this. how is he staying? How is he staying in, in character, in character and in the breaking? moment without laughing? Yeah. Because to me, that's like when you see you know, a uh, uh, bloopers reel from a Will Ferrell movie. And right. He can't stay in character. He just bursts out laughing. If I was trying to do what you're doing, I, I don't know that I could finish the video without busting out laughing. There's the, that one was really close. Yeah. That one, that one I started, I mean, as soon as I said, okay, bye. As soon as I hit, bye. You, know, boy, you started okay, laughing. Bye. I started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, it was just, the, yeah. the one where I was out in the, I the was desert, the, the salt flats. Yeah. In, in yeah. Utah. And what it was is my, uh, we make a calendar. My, my, my son came up with the idea to do a calendar. Yep. A couple of years. And so he goes, I'll do everything. So he puts this whole thing together. He gets the pictures, he gets the quotes and, you know, he watches the video and figures out what to use. And yep. 
and he wanted to do a a, a, a photo shoot for the cover mm -hmm. out at the salt flats because yeah. he lives in utah okay he's a photographer and so we go out there and we're he's got me taking all these different pictures and doing all these weird poses and and he goes, oh, it's going to be a second. I'm going to switch out the cameras and, and stuff. And I'm, so I'm standing there and I'm like, I ain't do. Because at the time, those videos were, you know, somebody was in the distance. Hey, wait a second. Run up there and go, yeah. you're awesome. You're a woman. <laughs> Nobody's told you to do yeah, right. You're a beautiful human being. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, those videos. And so I thought, <laughs> I, I'm going to do one of those. So I set up the camera and everything. And uh, I get way back there. And I start running and I'm thinking about this whole video. <laughs> and while I'm running up, I just start you laughing. You start to I laugh, like, right? I, just, I was like, right. Okay. So I go and stop. Get, get, get my composure. And I thought, okay, what I'm going to say is, and I had it fell figure I was going to say, is it back there? And I come up there and I get down there and You're everything I was going to say, gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Gone. Yeah. I have no way. And I literally, it was literally, I forgot what I was going to say. Yep. Because I did, <laughs> I really had no idea what I was saying. Right, but you played it off so and, well. And so I do the do the video when I click when I was done. I was like, "That was beautiful. <laughs> that was perfect." <laughs> right. I, I, whatever I was gonna do, I ain't gonna bother doing it because this is this, this is so is much it. better. This right. Is it. This right. Is the thing. And I knew it. it was that was that's probably the only one that I've ever done that would as soon as it was over, I was like, "Yes, this, this is one, gonna be big. This one's gonna be big." Right. Now, did you? <laughs> Did you have any idea on how far back to go? Like, did you like have your son say, like, did you say to your son, hey, look in the look in the, look in this camera and tell me when I'm like far enough away that it looks ridiculous enough that I'm this tiny, <laughs> but you could still hear me going, hey, it was, hey. Well, it was the when I did the first run up and started laughing halfway through. Oh, so you know, you, you rewatched it all the way up, yeah, and um, to <laughs> stop it, and I was like. So then I backtracked. I was like, okay, yeah, I was about perfect. You okay. Know? I, like, I yeah. kind of figured it out. That but, was so funny. That's oh, one of my was... favorites, man. It still comes up. I, it was fu so funny because my kids don't even get, get impressed with much. But I go, <laughs> I, you know, they're on TikTok. And of course, I'm on the other side of TikTok. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I'm on whatever that means. I, I evidently I'm like hot moms and Asian models <laughs> come up on my for you page. <laughs> but my kids make fun That's of me how all the time. That's got me hooked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I go, dude, you got to join this. Uh, but, but he, uh, okay. but it's I got like, something for everyone. It really does. Like, hey, have you ever seen this guy? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make him fucking choke again. <laughs> but I was like, hey, have you ever seen this guy? And my 14 year old was like, oh my God, yeah, that guy's hilarious. I go, he's coming in the house this Thursday. <laughs> I said, he's my friend. He's coming on the show. We had him before. And uh, but it doesn't take much. I mean, it, it takes a lot to impress my kids, but they were impressed at the yeah, fact that you kids. were coming on because it's silly. Right. It's yeah. it's just it is. It, it, you, you're like a Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> There's the title. There's the title. Like Rodney, Rodney Norman. He's like a Muppet. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's funny because I've, I've, people have actually said that to me. It's like, you're a live action <laughs> Muppet. Yeah, exactly. There you go. A live action Muppet. Live action Muppet. <laughs> now, we were talking before the show. You had said that uh, some of your fans have actually arranged shows to get to see you. The majority of the shows that I have done in the last year have been set up by my fans. Wow. They've, they said, hey, I want you to come here. How do I get you? You know, they're like, <clears throat> We don't have a comedy club nearby. I was like, well, if you find a VFW, yeah, a big you, one. You can find a place where you get, you know, 60 people to sit and you know, point in the same direction. I can do it. Right, right. And so we, like I said, we, we did a show one time, uh, this uh, <laughs> pizza place. They're in the strip mall. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the strip mall was an old KFC that had gone out of business. And they, uh, they basically acquired it and turned it into a hippie uh, oh, head shop. Shit. Really? And uh had a big, you know, open area and so we we fit seventy Just, people in there and I did a show. Wow. For, for, that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. And, that is cool. And just all these, like the, the American Legion that I did in Stuartville, that was thrown together in a two week period. The guy said, Hey, I saw your because we had posted that we were driving we did a show in Carson City at a com, Carson Comedy Club in Carson City, Nevada. Yep. And we'd posted that and then we were the following Saturday, I was hosting a uh, a suicide prevention hike 
Mm -hmm. you know, it's raising money for this organization that helps veterans that are suicidal. Suicidal. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> so in between we had a week to actually get travel. There. Yeah. And so we thought, well, let's go hit some sites. Yeah. And we posted our, our thing and this guy sends a message. Hey, out. you're coming right by my, where I live. Yeah. Can I at least, can we at least do dinner or something? And right. I'd love it for you to do a show. Can you do where, where can you do a show? And, we started contacting yeah. and he knew uh, he had family that was in par part of the leadership of the American Legion. And yep. he brought it up to them and wow. they, they had an emergency board meeting. Oh my God. And just to uh, vote on it. Yeah. <laughs> to vote on it. It was like, are we going to do that? And you know, there was, well, it's not going to be one of those crass, dirty comedians, is it? Right. Like, right. No, yeah. No, no, it'll be good. Be right. Good. So well, and you are, and, and I know we talked about it on the last episode, but you're a Marine, you're an ex Marine. Right? Yeah. So yeah. how long were you in? It was four years, four years. Yeah. They, they you say once a Marine, always a Marine. <clears throat> yeah. So I didn't bother to read this. Yeah. <laughs> you got <laughs> the, you got the, yeah, you got it. It's like, okay. My, <laughs> uh, yeah. My brother was a, was a Marine. He was in the Marine reserves, but then they got activated. His unit got activated uh, for the Gulf war. Oh. So he ended up over there in 92, but yeah, no, every once a Marine, always a Marine. And they are honestly, he's, he's probably better brothers with them because he's been through way more with them than he was with me. Oh know? yeah. There's, there's a, it's a there's sense a, of pride with him. Oh yeah. yeah absolutely. There's, there's truly a, a brotherhood and a connection that you yeah. just can't explain. I mean, he, half his shirts Marines. are either nine line nine, uh, you know, uh -huh. uh, shirts or, uh, he's got this one shirt S wait a minute, S F M F. And it stands for Semper Fi motherfucker. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yep. You know, I've seen those. But, I've uh, seen those. But yeah, no. So that that must have held some weight with the VFW hall, right? Oh yeah, because yeah, they, they were, were hey, they he's were, a marine too. You oh, know, yeah, they were they were excited that I was uh, military. A veteran, yeah, that's but awesome. they made me an honorary member. They were like, that's gonna Will feel you please amazing. Join the American Legion. I'm like, uh, sure. sure, we're gonna <laughs> waive all the fees. You're in. Wow, so, that's, that's awesome. That was awesome. Hey, I mean, the first time that one of these fans reached out to you and kind of set this up, you must have been like. Really? This is you really know, reaching this, people. It, wow. Well, yeah. you know, it, you know, because you know, we do comedy for so many years. Right. And, right. You know, all these things are, like, yeah. you know, you, you know, that first time somebody wants to get a picture with you after a show. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. That Here is. We go. That is such a cool feeling. Or you get, or you know, you get your first person on Facebook that says, "Hey, I saw your show last night. You were I so really fun. liked it. Yeah. Yeah." It's like, you know, you get one of those, you know, in a year and you're, you're yeah. flying high. Yeah. 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 Now, I was, now it's every day. Right. Now I'm getting, you know, 10 to 20 messages every day of people telling me how funny I am and changed right. their life. And it's, it's really, it's amazing and it's overwhelming. And yeah. It's, I can imagine, you know, and you're just looking at it as I just did a couple of goofy videos each week. Yeah. I had well, no idea how. How many people it was going to impact? How many people it was going to make happy? Yeah, yeah, really. I, I'm just like, I just trying to, you know, try to make a few people kill. laugh. Yeah, because right. I mean, at this point, you know, I'm a 50 year old white male. Yeah, right. I give the the whole idea worst thing of, to be in America right now. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, you know, the sh the you chances of up. me having a comedy career at this point are little to none. Right. You know. Right. And well, all of a sudden, uh, here it is. And it's, it's, it's amazing, really, it's, it's, but, it's but you were the right person at the right place at the right time. You know what I mean? The the pandemic hitting and right. the stress levels that people were at and the divide that's in this country oh, yeah, right, right now. And you to were, have something that just takes people's mind right. off of having you were that stress relief, having to pick a side. You're just in the middle going, hey, both yeah. sides are ridiculous. You're all, you're yeah. all idiots. You're right. all idiots. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You, you're not you on know, any one side. You're just saying you're all idiots, and, which is yeah. perfect. And it's weird because you're right. Right place, right time. But imagine if the timeline, I just saw multiverse last night, uh, Dr. Strange. So I'm thinking don't, multiverse. Is, don't, but imagine don't say if, anything. I'm a woman, <laughs> but imagine if the Spoiler. multiverse, imagine if the multiverse is folded on each other. And this was the late 80s, early 90s with TikTok and all this, you'd have a sitcom based around your character. Yeah. Yeah. You know what Back I mean? Back in the yeah. day. There would be producers from Hollywood saying that character, imagine having a motivational speaker 
name what's his name again leonard mccrunsky leonard mccrunsky and he just goes around can, and can you imagine him things. getting hired to speak in front of a like a group at a corporate outing right and he gets exactly up there and he's talking like that that, that would be yeah that is that is my goal yeah I oh want, that'd be, that's a, a netflix one. series right there yeah. exactly yeah series. well nowadays it wouldn't be a sitcom it would be a netflix, netflix series, series. Yeah. exactly yeah. so netflix if you you're know, listening the, the the guys at corporate say this is the perfect guy to speak to our troops yeah. and then you come out and you're talking like this and they're looking at each other like what did we hire <laughs> what that would be yeah. awesome but the audience is loving it yeah you know the crowd just loves every yeah. second of it and everything <laughs> that would be so good that, that would be so well, good yeah, yeah we got to get in our producer roles yeah i know we got to work on that yeah well, that's that's been i think one of the funnest things because i've been able to you know uh because you have to think of it differently as a, as a comic and as a video producer. Right, right. It's a different medium. Yeah, it's a yeah. different thing. And, and and because you got so many kids watching it. Right. The things that they they find are funny are very different than what yeah. our generation finds. We talk funny. about that all the time. <clears throat> and, and and that's why I think TikTok and Reels is so good because their attention spans are so much shorter. Yeah. that you have to grab them in 15 to 30 seconds right yeah and they have to and it's and it's, it's just gonna be silly i i mean i've sat and just watched tiktoks and go and sitting there going this is stupid i don't get it yeah oh yeah and but as i, I but i try to think of it and okay try to think of it in the way they think in the way they see the world right and then it's like you you, you kind of have to take yourself back to being a 12 year old kid right and i think that's what I, that's really part of what I'm doing with my my characters. I'm thinking, trying to see the world. What if you're familiar with Mr. Bean? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. absolutely. You know, he doesn't his, say a word. Yeah, and his whole idea. You know, they say, "Where was your inspiration?" He says, "I'm I'm literally a ten year old child in an adult's body." Exactly, and that's, that's what the makes whole it funny. Of Mr. Right. Bean. And and I I remember uh, thinking about that as I'm as I'm working on this character. And I was like, "That's it." Again, kind of my. What was I like at 12? Right. Which was the age that my grandfather <clears throat> passed away. Wow. And and I thought back to the things that made me laugh as a 12-year-old. And that's, I thought, right. That's what I need to do. I, I like that insight. Now, so I'm picturing you're basically doing your 12-year-old Rodney doing an impression of his grandfather. Absolutely right. So that's, you're doing an impression right. of your grandfather at that 12 year old. The way Rodney's you saw point of him at that time. The way I saw him and the way I saw the world at right. that time. At that time. That's and great. Because of that, I'm I'm the the character is identifying with kids. Get it, but right. everybody can. Yeah. But but that's why there's such an innocence to the character because it's a character of an adult as seen through a 12 year old's yes. eyes. Yes. Wow, we just went meta. I love it. Yeah, You're the I love first it. First ones I've shared this with. We've went behind. No, no, I, I, we I, feel I, honored that I, you did that. Yeah, you know, I I love that <clears throat> type of stuff to kind of figure out where somebody came up with that creative right side of it, you know, and everything because I love that character. And but what makes it work is it's authentically you. You know, mm -hmm. it's real life. It's based on real life experience. Mm -hmm. You know, your grandfather and 12 year old you drawn together created <clears throat> that character. So it's real, you right, know, and, and right. that's why it works. And I think that's why people can identify it. It's not just some fake character you invented. Yeah. It's based in reality. Yeah. And and he's on and he this character fully believes everything he's saying. Right. Right. Yeah. And, right. And 100 percent. And thinks that he's being really point. serious. He's not trying to be funny. <laughs> right. No. You know, and I tell people he's all funny the time, by accident. Stop trying to be funny. Right. Just be honest and real. And the funny just shows up. Right. And, and I think that's why your videos are successful, because there are people that create social media accounts to try to get a million views. Yeah. And then the reason yours are getting, like you said, a million views in 24 hours is because you're just trying to create some funny content and right. it's genuine. So because it's authentic, it's just blowing up. When yeah. you try to do it, you can't recreate that stuff. Yeah. When it's authentic, yeah. that's the stuff that blows up. You know, it, when you think about the, the videos on YouTube, like Charlie bit my finger, that became one of the biggest viewed videos of all right. time. Yeah. It was just these two little kids sitting on, on a chair. It was just a real video that happened in someone's house. Right. You know, that's why that worked. But then yeah. these people that do these stage videos, I hate those now when I, when oh, I go on ridiculous. those. They're yeah. so awful. 
you know, where yours are, are like I said, they're, they're authentic. It's authentic. Right. Yeah. And that's it, awesome. And they're so, they're so much fun. And then being able to carry that over to this live show. Right. Right. I don't know if you've seen the ones that I do where I, I, I literally say nothing for the first couple. Of yes. Minutes. Yes. Cause, cause what I've learned is, 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 is you, when you create that tension. Yes. Let it know, build. And, yeah. And I, you, I try to think of myself as if, if I'm, a, if I'm in the audience and I'm watching someone, right. You get nervous for them. Yeah. You know, when you see somebody like I, when I was this, um, uh, thing for the veterans um, yeah. hike, uh, a gentleman sang the national anthem. Mm -hmm. He got up there. He forgot the words half the way through. Oof. And, you know, everybody was just, everybody was rooting for him. Right. You know? Of and course. Yeah. So myself and uh, two of the other guys who were, you know, the event organizers, we, we got up on stage Start and sang singing. with him. Right. And then, and then, the then it brings crowd, them back up. The whole crowd started singing. With right. Us. So for the last verse, it was, everybody was singing. And yeah, it, be, that's it awesome. what became what was an awkward and embarrassing moment for him became a, a, a just a beautiful even more beautiful moment, moment. for the whole group because yeah. now as we were all there we were right. all there giving this guy a hug mm -hmm. and being there with him because we knew because he was part of it was nervous was nervous then, yeah you know, it's not like he didn't know the words yeah he of wasn't course. trying to goof on anybody he right was just, he really it, and he is the emotions he was starting to cry because yeah. you know this this was a special, yeah, powerful song special moment for him and and it was falling apart yeah and we all just got up there and it oh, became this awesome. beautiful moment and you know i've i see myself you know when i get on stage i want to be so weird and awkward that the audience themselves that it becomes about them mm -hmm. and their experience now they're drawn into this moment because now they're emotionally involved before i say a single, a single word, word right they're already rooting for uh, because yeah. themselves they're like i would never be i would be totally i could never stand up in front of people and stay That's quiet like for 30 seconds right people yeah you know and then i'm not being emotional i'm just i'm being very comfortable in this yeah. awkwardness you know, and they're just like, uh, you know, they're building up with all this tension. People just start laughing and they don't know why they're laughing. Right. And it's because it's the release because I'm, I'm, I'm making them laugh subconsciously. They right. don't even know or understand it. They just can't stop themselves laughing. Right. And so now they're drawn in, they're emotionally involved. They're already on my side. They want me to be successful before I say a word. So when and you that's do kind say of something the opposite of most comedians because we want to fill the, the silence, silence. Yeah. yeah when we're up there you know we we've as you get more experience you learn how to use the silence uh -huh. to, to your advantage but for most comedians when there's too much silence you want to <laughs> instinctively fill that silence. oh yeah right. yeah you want to go hey how's everybody doing tonight all right all right yeah. look at this guy with the red hey, shirt give, hey what are you what is hey, this, give Santa yourselves Claus? another round of applause oh, for coming right, out yeah, tonight you know right. you what you wanted you because it's you feel awkward in that moment so you want to fill it so to embrace that awkwardness and use that to your advantage the, f the when you first started doing that that takes some balls to do that oh yeah and because you know you don't know if that's going to work when you first do it yeah i mean yeah. your first because how first, long do i go do, yeah. do, do i don't well, you know your long. first your first instinct as a comic is someone's going to say something and screw it up right right right, right. yeah and all the times i've done it, i've had somebody yell out something once <laughs> yeah. really and uh, i just looked at them and go Please don't talk to me. And then the place just just <laughs> erupted. Right. <laughs> Which and helps then I just you because down. if it ever happens again, you know what's going to work. Yeah, they, they already know. <clears throat> right. Oh, we don't mess with this guy. Right. And it's it, it's such amazing. I've had so many comedians who, you know, they'll watch my whole set and they go, I can't believe. You had them laughing before you, I mean, before, before you, you even, even said a word, said a word. They right. were all, and, and like, not just, but laughing hard. I right. mean, not just, yeah. uh, but I mean, but, they're, but they're, the thing is too, you're a character when you go up on stage, yeah, you know I, what I mean? Like, yes, I like you, to say, I, yeah, I'm not saying a joke. I am the joke. Right. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you this because I've seen pictures. I've seen your Marine pictures. I've seen your other pictures. Did you consciously for comedy? grow out the beard the mustache the long crazy hair um or did it just kind of happen 
Well, I, I my cousin, the one that I used to sit at the table and listen to and listen to your right? grandfather. Yeah, he, he we were just a year difference mm-hmm. in age. He was a year older, and uh, I grew grew up with him. He was really my first comedy partner. And we mm-hmm. used to do skits together at scout camps. Yeah, just we were always trying to make each other laugh. Yeah, I mean, he was my first real audience. Yeah, was, if I could make Jeff laugh, that yeah. then you I knew you I could make something. anyone yeah. laugh. Yeah, and so we were just just as kids we were just always just joking and just we just loved to make each other laugh mm-hmm. and he uh he he passed away oh i'm sorry and it was really sick because he had it was a weird thing because he had uh, his wife and him had just started uh they started doing the keto diet mm-hmm. yeah and he had lost a bunch of weight he had he was better healthy better than shape and he stuff yeah yeah just losing all this weight and his blood pressure was better and just everything he was just i, I remember talking to him and said he says i, I haven't felt this good in mm. probably my entire life i just feel great yeah and then out of nowhere passed away he was gone wow and, i'm gonna stay fat yeah <laughs> and <laughs> And, but one of the things he's, he's been a Santa Claus for years Mm -hmm. and he he used to work for Sears and their Santa Claus died or quit or something one year. And they're like, Hey, we need someone to play Santa. Yeah. And they had a suit and he's like, I'll do it. You know, he's like late twenties, early thirties. So he started being Santa for Sears. Yep. And, uh, then people were hiring him. Out, yeah, you know they would come for see other him things. at Sears and go, "Hey, yeah. can you come to my party." Right. So it became a part of his life was being Santa Claus every year. Yeah, and he kept trying to get me to do it. And I'm like, oh, no. "Yeah, right." What well, when he when he passed away? Um, uh, I just I I thought he would he had been trying to get me to do mm-hmm. do Santa for so long, and I just thought, you know, I'm. I'm going to do it. And then I thought, okay, if I'm going to do Santa, I'm going to do it right. Right. I'm not going to wear this, the yeah, elastic headband beard, Yeah, you know, or anything like that, especially if you can grow it. Like I could never do it, but yeah. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And yeah. then I thought, okay, if I'm going to do Santa, I'm going to do Santa better than anyone's ever done Santa. Yeah. So I came with this idea to do Santa as a stand-up comic. <laughs> I love it. And, I watched all these. I went and found everything I could find of anybody who's ever done Santa yeah. stand up, and it's all they all do the same. It's all drunk, yeah, mean pedophile jokes, right? Right, nasty. yeah. They're oh. trying to, oh, that's all right. No. It's no they're trying yeah. to be the opposite of what you would yeah. expect. Santa yeah, they're to be. being right, yeah, they're being, and that's what everybody does, right? Yeah, and so I thought, here is this brilliant character who's yeah. been alive for centuries. Right. But has all these ideas and all these thoughts. He's been through all these experiences. Why would you, you know, stop and just do a bunch of dick jokes? Yeah, right. Yeah. And so I thought, I'm going to do it as straight up as Santa Claus. Right. What would, what would, what would he be talk about? You right. Know, he would still be caring, but at the same time, Hey, the elves are a pain in the ass sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, you know, right. He's got some, he got some North Pole jokes and yeah, yeah he's got right. something to say. And yep. so I started working on it and uh, mm-hmm. I finally had some friends who do a uh, a fundraiser in Utah every year. Yeah. To raise money for oh thanks. This way you don't get you don't get electrocuted yeah. over <laughs> <laughs> And so I started working on this stand up Santa. And yeah. so they have this show. And I had gotten a really nice Santa suit. Yeah. And so I, I, I asked my friends, like, hey, can I, you know, and can it's I a packed it? house. It's over 300 people. It's yep. this big event. And I say, hey, can I, can I do stand up Santa? <laughs> He's like, oh, sure. Why right. not? You know. So I go up there and I do this, 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 and oh, it just kills. I Did mean, it? It just killed. Really? And I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. And my friend, so who, listen, listen, Timmy. If you don't get a bike this, uh, you know, this Christmas, uh, it's you, because you were bad. So you know, you gotta get over it. Uh, you move oh, yeah. on. <laughs> you know, you know, one of one of my one of my bits is, you know, many children have said that, uh, hey, I don't believe in Santa Claus because I have seen my parents delivering my presents 
instead of Santa Claus. So I know you're not real. Well, I just want to inform you that if you have, in fact, caught your parents delivering presents, it's because you were on the naughty list. <laughs> and they're trying to cover and they up. they know how naughty you've been, and they were scared of you. So they delivered presents because you're a little snot. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And they don't want to put up with your crap. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and, uh <laughs> And so I, and so my friend who actually books dry bar, yeah, he saw it and oh, it made him he was that's so awesome. Is that how you got the dry bar special? And so the next, the next year, um, I, I filmed, uh, my, uh, most recent special. Yeah. And at the same time, he's like, Hey, uh, you want to do stand up Santa? And I'm like, are you for real? He goes, yeah, <laughs> I think it's great. Let's yep. do it. And so we, we, I, I got to do it for dry bar. Wow. That's and awesome. Then, awesome. Yeah, it was. And is that out yet? The, oh, yeah, the yeah. Santa on, one? Yeah. The Santa's on dry oh, bar. Is it? And oh, I want to do, cool. I want to do another one. I was going to do one this last year, but it just, it wasn't quite ready. And I didn't yeah. want to put it. I didn't want to just throw it out there yet. So let me ask but, you, because we've got other friends that have been on dry bar and I've been told for 30 something years that, Oh, you're such a clean comedian. And, and I've got some risque stuff, but what does, what constitutes dry bar? Is it just not swearing? Can you be, I mean, you can be, you can be a little, a little a risque, little, a little risque. Yeah, Probably you just, about, you know, old TV clean, not right. You know, right. new yeah, TV clean. Yeah, I wouldn't clean, do my Valtrex herpes joke, Family Guy. Yeah, I yeah. probably wouldn't get away. I with mean, it. you have to think of it that the majority of the audience is, um, is uh, you know, strict religion, religious, very yeah. Christian based. Yeah, and that might hurt me. Yeah, they're really <laughs> well, and they're they're really just just looking that you're not graphic, you're not right, profane. Right. Or, yeah, you know, if, if you if you is, watch some of the specials and you can download the Dry Bar app, yeah. I've watched Kenny Rogerson on there. Right, I've seen right. yours, Rodney. Yeah. Um, Max Tocelli's yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah. Um, Andrew Kennedy's is mm -hmm. on there. The, there's some really good specials. Yeah, you can you can hit on some adult subject matters, like you said. Yeah, it just can't be descriptive and over the top, right? You know, right. or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, if if you're you know like like we talk about all the time with certain fundraiser shows, right? You know, like. PG, you know, nine o'clock at night television type of right, right. Yeah, it's a, adult yeah. humor. As I, as I like to say, you know, I'm not dirty, but, right? But sometimes I'm a little naughty, right? Right, <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's a, and that's the thing. Like, I yeah, I, I think there's one joke that I do that's more dirty that I don't do all the time, and it's the uh, the um, Ron Jeremy. If if other actors ended up in the same predicament as Ron Jeremy. <laughs> Uh, because Ron Jeremy was a legitimate actor. Yeah, when I he might, first started. I might not do that on my no, dry no, bar I special. No, I'm no, just saying. No, but the other <laughs> stuff that I do, I just always wondered if it would if it would hit no. because it's a lot about growing up Catholic. And you saw me when we yeah, did the yeah. show together for the yeah. uh, for the theater fundraiser, and it's a lot of like it's a little irreverent towards religion though, but it's only be from my perspective of yeah, yeah. being Catholic, you know, I wouldn't do the Ron Jeremy. Uh, yeah. I do. It, it's basically what happened. If like Ron Jeremy started out as a legitimate actor, he was doing commercials and then he'd get a porno gig and then he would do another commercial and get two porno gigs. So he just kind of had to follow the money. Yeah. So yeah. then I do this hypothetical situation where what if some of today's greatest actors ended up, in Ron Jeremy's shoes where they just went into porno instead. And so I do Christopher Walken and, uh, Oh, I know the bit. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, I end with Ray Romano and it's, you a, can't do that bit. I know I can't All do right, that bit. I'm just wondering about it, the other stuff. Can't do I it. want Rodney to know about it. Cause it's a funny bit. <laughs> it's a it great a bit. funny bit. Well, I get, I, time and place. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but I've always thought because I know so many people that have done dry bar and I would love to do it. But I, I guess I would have to sit down with people like you and you who know my act right. to say, all right, you know what? Here's the here's the act that you got to do for dry bar. Yeah. Well, here's and and do. that's why because you know? of stuff like dry bar, because I'm doing a lot more fundraisers and I've Ooh. talked to you about this this past, especially six months, all the new stuff I've written and the stuff I've been working on is all basically clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's stuff that I could do in front of a 12 year old, but I, I, I feel like I still make adults laugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I did a show last night for 
a nurse's appreciation dinner. It's a co- it was a corporate gig, and I did all that new stuff that I wrote. I purposely, it, it, you know, I I have some old stuff that I knew would hit with nurses and medical staff, mm-hmm. but I purpose I did that to the end of the set, the beginning of the set. I did all this new stuff I did because I said I want to do all this clean stuff yeah. first, see how it works, and see how it hits because I've been working on it and it all worked. Mm-hmm. You know, I because I've been working on it for a while, and then I went into that old stuff and I actually rewrote a lot of that stuff to make it a little bit cleaner and a little more corporate mm-hmm. friendly and everything right. like that because i've been trying to because it, it's so much easier to take a clean joke and make it sound dirty oh it's yeah so absolutely. much harder to take a dirty joke and make it clean absolutely oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 you know so <clears throat> and you know i was never a <clears throat> dirty dirty comic right but i did walk along that line of okay you probably three quarters of my act i couldn't do at a clean show a, right, true, right. a true clean show well, I, because it was suggestive yeah. it's too suggestive well and I, i've always told people when you first start doing comedy tr- you really do your best to just write clean because right. you'll become a better writer exactly. you're right because it opens you up it actually is more freeing and right. more liberating when you're trying to be clean because then it forces you to go into new places and right. think different ways whereas if you're dirty you know, you've always got You're the crutches. You, you can always fall right. back on the, you know, the, yeah. you know. Well, and it's, especially when stuff. you're new, that 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 safety blanket of the dirty humor, because it gets the laugh. Yeah. 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 Well, and and sometimes you know, so you you go for that low hanging fruit. Well, yeah. and sometimes yeah. that's what the audience wants. So that joke that I just talked about, I set it up with Ron Jeremy, you know, being you know going into porno, but I'm like. Imagine if some of today's greatest actors, you know, had other jobs. Like, what? what's the most famous job that every actor had? It was a waiter. So I would do Christopher Walken as your waiter. Yeah. And, you know, and and other people as the waiter or some other. Yeah. You know, well, so there's yeah, a clean sometime, version sometime. of it. Or, or even if you were, uh, I like to do this, where you get the audience thinking you're going dirty. Right. Yes. So they're expecting it to be dirty, and then it's and then it's not that. exactly. And that throws like, them off. You guys have a problem now. Yeah. You yeah. you call them. Now out. I had a headliner tell me one time. I I you know I said what you just said. Where yeah. The audience wants you to go dirty. He goes. The audience doesn't know what they want. They don't. He goes. It's up to us they to don't. show them what they what yeah. they want. He yeah. goes. Funny is funny. Whether it's dirty, it's clean. It doesn't matter. I don't know. If you make them laugh. You can get them on your side yeah. and you can tell them what you want. You work clean no matter where you're at, right? Right. Whether yes. you're on at a comedy yeah. club, a fundraiser, no yeah, matter I what. Just, I just do my That's act. just your right. act. Yeah. No, but I know that my funnier my funnier version of that joke is the dirty version sure. because sure. of the, the way it's been written. So if I get up in front of the crowd and I say, all right, listen, guys, there's a clean version of this joke and there's a dirty version. Which one do you guys want? Well, to let me let me ask you a question. Let's go dirty. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. But if you just did oh, the clean version did every the, time, never absolutely. gave a choice, just did that, it would it would you would still okay. get laughs. Absolutely, yeah. I know. But I almost. I but almost, you like the dirtier version. I do I do? Yeah. I of like course, it you, and that's fine. I can't help. There's it. nothing wrong with that. But everything else about my act is pretty clean, and that's why I think I wrote these two dirtier jokes. Actually, the the Family Guy thing wasn't written to be a dirty joke. It was written because a lot of my impressions were older characters. Uh And I started to find that like 20, 30 year olds weren't getting you know, some of the yeah. stuff. They so I'm like, they weren't know, getting Roger Rabbit anymore. Nah, yes. <laughs> I haven't done Roger Rabbit in a long time. Please, Eddie. Uh, but no, they weren't getting even like Rodney, uh, Rodney. They weren't getting like Gilbert Gottfried and, and Bobcat Goldwave. So I was like, oh shit, I do all these family guy impressions. Let me write a joke about that. And that's how that, you yeah. know, came along. And if you're going to do Family Guy, you're not going to do a, a squeaky clean joke with Family Guy. Yeah. You got to be a little irreverent. And I don't think it's over the top dirty. It's just a little suggestive and irreverent. It's just I have to say the word herpes. Yeah. Which is not really that bad. I don't know. What well, would you that think? Bad. Would that go over on Dry Bar if I said uh. herpes? I, th- I think you're not describing how they got the herpes. No, I'm not you're talking about taking a well, Valtrex. And especially for because I say I was a sales rep for Valtrex. How many people know what Valtrex is for? And usually there's people that raise their hand, yeah. but yeah. there's not a lot of people. So I go, listen, folks, the CDC states that 
one in four people in America has herpes, only three people in this room raise their hand, you look around your table and do the math. There's yeah, more, yeah. you know, and that gets a laugh. Yeah. But beyond that, it's not like I really I don't talk about how they got it or anything like that. It's, no, no. That's what I'm saying. You don't get it's suggestive. It's not. Yeah. It's you, not you, like well, you I, said. I, I think it's funnier when the audience has to fill in the blank. They anyway. have to think. Right. That's right. my it's not favorite humor. Your yeah. the, the, the term you used earlier was graphic. It's not graphic. They have to fill in the blank. Yeah. You which create, really says more about them. Yeah. Yeah. You create, uh, you know, you. you it's like uh, you're, you're, you're uh, you know, those things where they kind of half draw the picture. Right. For you and, and they have to fill in. the rest in. It's yeah. one of those deals. I, right. ha I have two jokes. I did them both last night where I did it and I just stand there for a minute and I go, think about it. Yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden it gets a big laugh because it's just, oh, I don't say it. Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then I do another one later on and I just wait a minute. And I go, all right, everyone got that. That's going to get it because, you know, I need to move on. I, yeah, I need to I need to move on to the next on. thing. And, that, and and again, because I give them long enough to kind of right. say it back in their head uh, that they get it. But type of thing. I love and I wish <clears throat> I could do more stuff like that where it takes them a minute to get it. Yeah, because that's my favorite humor when comics can write stuff that oh that's what he meant right. i yeah. love that but stuff. that's why when i say listen one out of four people has herpes in this right. country it's not my numbers it's the cdc and when then I'm, the rest of the audience gets it and yeah. they start and laughing. when he does that joke where i'm working with him i'm in the back of the watching you'll see people kind of look around yeah. at the other people at and the i'll table. look like they're going to recognize well, who at the table we, well, yeah uh, and that's the thing i'll look at a table at i go listen you guys have 10 people at your table do the math figure it out i don't know there's more than one and that's when like everyone around them starts laughing at the big table it. at 10 just you know? ask people something simple like last night yeah. i said how many people here are trying to lose weight no one wants to raise their hand and right yeah. losing yeah. weight even the biggest person in the room doesn't admit that right and i went fine you're all comfortable being the fat bastards that you are good for you right. you know and then everyone starts laughing at everybody because yeah. no one wants you to pointed out it. the obvious yeah right. it, you know it's just it's just one of those things i like that's the type of stuff that you got to point out the obvious sometimes and you do that with that joke. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow. So how Man. you have how many dry bar specials? Well, I have I have You have my, the Santa Claus one? The Santa Claus, then I have You have the one with no beard? No beard. That was the first one. <laughs> yes. Well, that was that was filmed the first season. Really? Right. I right. was like I think about the fourth or fifth week that they were started filming them before they even, you know. Yep. We didn't know anything about so it. So you like, got in on the ground floor. The ground like, floor. Literally, they were like, hey, we're thinking of doing this. Yeah, but. That's huge now. They 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 started filming them, and they they basically decided that um, if you were a middle-aged uh, white guy, you kind of got put on the back of the list to yeah, get yeah. released. Right. And I got put in a queue that was basically just ignored for many years. Oh, okay. And so I, I had heard that they were never going to release it. Really? And so I just moved on, you know. Yeah. And, right, I, and right. I had, and it kind of messed me up a little bit because when I filmed the most recent special, you know, now I've got the long hair, I've got the beard, it's a whole different right. act. But yeah. I had some of the same jokes, <clears throat> but they were different now because of, they've evolved. They've evolved. Right. And, um, so I didn't, I didn't know that when I never thought that was going to be released. I, I just forgot about it. Yeah. I was just done with it. It was like, ah, eh, it was a but test. There was, and if it, there was actually, it was because of a miscommunication because of the Santa thing. Mm -hmm. Cause we'd filmed the Santa thing just before, New, um, Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and the owner who's my friend yeah. <clears throat> said, Hey, get that one done. Let's get it out there as soon as we can. Yeah. Well, it was about figuring leading into Christmas. Yeah, that it was, yeah. you know, let's get it out there. Well, it, basically it was a, a, a miscommunication mm -hmm. because the guy who decided uh, that was supposed to be doing that, he went and just grabbed my old special that no one had done anything with. Oh. And he started working on that one to edit it okay. for release Yep. instead of doing the Santa. <laughs> and so like, a, you know, we, and a half before Christmas, I'm going, is this even going to be released? Because right. this is a waste of time. And you're waiting for the Santa one to come out. Yeah. Right. And so when they find out, oh, you, you know, then they went and they hurried and got the Santa one done. And then yep. 
and then yeah but now they had already put in all this work for that one editing the no beard so then right. they decided just go ahead and release that oh one. okay but i never thought they were going to right so then that one's out there and now i'd already filmed the other one that still has the same some of the same jokes on it oh and then well, in the midst of this, I go and do one of their live shows where they're not filming it. It's just a it's regular just a, audience, regular show, just right. any comedy club because they got the space. Why not just keep yeah. doing shows? So we're doing one of those. Well, that show, it was the first one. They decided to try to start doing YouTube live shows. Oh. And so they uh, so they broadcast my, that show live. Oh, my God. I didn't know. So now all of a sudden filming. you got four dry bar so things got going four on. Dry right? bar, and three of them had some of the same jokes. I'm right. going, I look like an idiot now. <laughs> So it's it's kind of bizarre. Well, but you look different in each one of them, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so they, you know, we'll, they we'll may see. not have even. They're like, and most hey, people don't watch that them. guy with no beard is ripping off that Santa guy. Yeah. What yeah. the hell is this guy <laughs> doing? What's that doing? But no, that, awesome. but my latest one's going to be released this weekend. Oh, that's awesome. And th yeah. So we'll have I'm to make sure we put that it. in the show notes. Yeah. We'll put, yeah, a, yeah, we'll put a link fact, to it. In fact, if you want to get your first month of Dry Bar app for free, just put in Rodney Norman. There you in go. the code, and you'll get your first month of Dry Bar for free. You got to check it out. And, and the Dry Bar hilarious. app is great. And we've had many guests on here that have Dry Bar specials. Like yeah. I men mentioned, Max Andrew. Docelli, Andrew yes. Kennedy, um, Rick D'Elia has yep, one on Rick, there. Yeah. there. There's some really great specials. Other comedians um, that we haven't had on here, but some really funny. Th th it's an amazing yeah. uh, collection of comedy. That, oh, that's it, on they there. really they stumbled across something because in by accident. Yeah. yeah. You know, because they didn't know what they were doing. Really? They just knew that they needed. Well, they were. They had this company. It was called Angel Studios, where uh -huh. they would. You could watch a movie there, and you could put in your thing and have it. They would edit any movie. You know how you get like a TV edit, yeah. edited for TV. Yep. You could go in and say, "Hey, I, I want to watch this movie, but I don't want any of this stuff." You know, really? You, know, so you could take That's out all the nudity started. and. Yeah, but they got sued by all the studios, especially Disney. Had to well, you know, said sure. you can't do this, and you right. don't, you know. Yeah, you can't and you so, can't edit out the nude Snow yeah. White. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Everyone knows. And we so want to then, see Snow White's tits. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I said it. But so then they so they saw the writing on the wall and they thought, okay, well, we'll just start doing original content. And, and they've made a great transition mm -hmm. doing that. One of the first things they they thought was let's do clean comedy. Right. So they contacted my friend who owns Wise Guys, Key Stubbs. Okay. And said, hey, can you bring us comics? And he's like. Uh, sure. So is that where it's filmed? The why the yeah, it's filmed uh, it's, in, it, at it's filmed in you, Well, it's not. They have their own studio in Provo. Oh, okay. So it's it's actual dry bar studio club, comedy studio. club. Yeah. Okay. And so he started booking it, and you know he's a com comedian. Yeah. He knows comics from everywhere, all over the place. Some right. of the greatest comics that nobody's ever heard of. Right. And all of a sudden, here's they're here's doing a venue. broadcast quality right. shows. So he just starts loading them up because, you know, he, he knows yep. everybody. Right. And it just turned into a gangbuster. That's of so a deal. awesome. I watched so many people because it was comics who were getting, who aren't in the demographic of Comedy Central. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Up. And so it exposed <clears throat> all these great comics to a big audience and it just, just. Right. Blew up. Well, look at Bill Campbell from from boston yes, yes you know just had his dry bar released a couple of months ago mm -hmm. here's a guy who's been doing it like 45 years yeah. you know and never really broke never you know he was one of those original boston guys yeah. ding ho guys but just never really broke but every big comic knows them every comic knows yeah, bill yeah you know what i mean and now they so get that special awesome. and now all these people are going oh there's great comics exactly and it was just all these people who got ignored by Right, you know, right. Because they're always looking for the younger, right? You know, Eighteen they, to thirty-five is the yeah, demographic you're yeah, always shooting exactly. for. Exactly. If you're yeah. outside that, they weren't even considering you. Right. And now all of a sudden, here's this: these guys, they didn't know anything about comedy. Yeah, He's these like, these road comics or these you know these really established regional comics that no one outside of their region really knows. Yeah. And now you're giving them a national stage. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So it was it was really just the wow. fact that they didn't know they're what they were doing made it work right yeah well, kind of like your your videos. your tiktok exactly it's your whole like TikTok, TikTok career you just you know it, it, it wasn't happened. it wasn't planned it wasn't contrived it just happened it just organically happened. now it's awesome in the coming soon section on dry bar yeah mm -hmm. is our friend rodney norman yes. here and i love the title of the special 
dissertation of the pretense of nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> and he literally looks like you. I would. That is the perfect title of a Rodney Norman. Special. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Dissertation. Not the, the only dissertation. Thing, no. Just dissertation of the pretense of nothingness. The only thing that would be better is have your pity party and get over it. <laughs> That yeah, should be the name of your next one. <laughs> that would be perfect. Have your pity party and get, and get over, over it and move it. on. <laughs> and get over it. That, that, well, that would be the perfect title of a collection yes. of Leonard's sayings, sayings all yeah, together. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm actually writing, writing a, book. a book. I was going to say. There you go. You and, need to. And I've been thinking of a title now. I think you're there right. There you go. The, yeah. Have your pity party right. and move on. <laughs> That's the name of the book. That'd That's be a great, perfect. That'd be a great one. That's perfect. Well, listen, we've talked a lot about yeah. uh, positive stuff. Uh-huh. And we know that you talked uh, with us the last time you were on, but it has been a couple of years. So maybe you've had another experience. But we like to ask our guests to wrap up the show. We like to ask about uh, the funny bad gig story. And funny, bag. not so funny when it was it, happening. It wasn't funny, made you want to quit comedy, but it gets so ridiculous that months later, weeks later, you're in the green room with other comics and everyone's trading these war stories of these horrible gigs they've had. And everyone's laughing at them because we all laugh at everyone else's pain because that's what we yes. do as comics. Yes, we do. But you turn around and you go, oh, <laughs> you think that's bad? Listen to this. It's your um, hold my beer story. Let's see. I think the last time I was here, I talked about the the oil rig guys. That I think you did. Okay. I think that was the one well, that you I told. Had, I, yeah. had this, I had this other one that was okay. It was so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> already like He's it. He's rubbing his head. For those like that it. are watching, he that are listening, his head on audio. and said, "This is so stupid." Yeah. I already like it. There <laughs> was there was this club that was so so infamous in mm-hmm. comedy. Even Jay Leno has mentioned this 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 room. It's yeah. in Idaho Falls. Idaho Mm -hmm. and it was in this uh, I think it was called the pepper tree Inn, and it was one of those old thing. It was built in the seventies. So it was had the, you know, the kind of U shaped hotel. And then there was like this funky weird hallway Mm -hmm. and then this sort of half round weird, big building for big events. Oh yeah. 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 And it was like, at some point in time, it was like, they were going to have this grand ballroom. And then they thought, Nah, never mind. Let's convert it into three different rooms. You know, so it's oh, like yeah, awkward. like function rooms. It's like yeah. it just makes none of it makes any sense. Yeah. And there's just bar and then okay. They and they have live comedy there. But here's the deal they do the live comedy show from at uh eight o'clock. Yeah. It goes to uh you know, it starts at yeah, it starts at eight and it goes to nine thirty. Yep. Then they have live dancing at ten. Okay. Okay. Here's yeah. the, here's the kicker is that all the, you know, it's Idaho Falls. So there's not a lot going on. Right. That's a big night out. Yeah. Comedy and dancing in yes. one night. Yeah. Well, it's the only real dance hall in the area. <clears throat> yeah. And so uh, here's the deal. <laughs> they start the show at eight. The first guy goes on. You know, it's a two man show. It's a, you got an opener does 30 and then the headliner does an hour. So the opener goes up there. He does his half hour. The only people there are there for comedy. Right. So that guy has a great time. <laughs> I know oh, exactly. He has a great show. Oh. There's 40 people. They're yeah. sitting in there. They're sitting but around. They are the dance there floor. for comedy. They're there for comedy. And it is, it is, you're just, you know, you're sitting as a comic. You know, and you're headlining. This, this you're crowd's going to be great. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you're, you're looking, and you're looking at the back of the room. All of a sudden, this room's starting to fill up. Yeah. Oh, it's even like, oh, better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got more people coming oh, in. Yeah. This is, you got four people that are right sitting down here. I got another hundred people just walking through the door right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna blow this place up. Here we I know go. Where this is going. Here we go. This is a headline. So he goes up there and he does his thirty minutes. And it's well received. He's a very funny gentleman. Everything's going well. And and now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rodney Norman. All right. So I get up there and I start telling my jokes and. I am mean, halfway through my first line and this dude comes walking up and looks at me and stares, stares at me, looks at me and goes, Hey, where's the bathrooms at? <laughs> 
Because he's been pre-gaming before the dance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I think they're back over there where you came in. <laughs> well, that's stupid. Yeah, I agree. All right. So what's going on here? What are you guys doing? <laughs> he's having a conversation. Completely oblivious to the fact there's a show going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> so going, what do you got going on here? I'm going, well, we're going to start a comedy show here in a few minutes. Oh, yeah. Are they funny? I, I don't know. I've never heard of them. Goes, oh, okay. Okay. Well, meanwhile, well, you're literally on stage, on stage starting on your stage, jokes. But you're, the stage area is the dance floor. Right. <laughs> so he walks through the so dance floor. Walks, <laughs> so then he leaves, and I'm just going, okay. And meanwhile, this is going on. Everybody, everybody's just kind of like, what the, the hell? 40 people who were there Why for comedy this? going, yeah. what the fuck so is he, going on? So he finally leaves as as... You know, and as it's getting closer, everybody's starting to come in yeah. to the back of the room, get ready for dancing. They're all talking, and it's getting louder <laughs> yep. and louder and louder to the point nobody can hear anything you're saying. Yep. And then they're yelling and screaming at each other because you're ordering know, drinks and oh yeah. yeah, they've been drinking since noon. Right. It's Idaho Falls. What else? Are you <laughs> yeah, what else do? is there to do? And right? it just a drink and dance. Into this this just weirdness for an hour, and yeah. every punchline you you come up with, um. They didn't hear the they, setup. They didn't hear the setup, and then they would yell out at you. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, do you know, have you heard of Richard Pryor? <laughs> <laughs> Not even yes, anything I, you could yeah, do right, something right, with. Right. Yeah. How do yeah, you work like, with that? Are, are you guys going to be done? Can we start early? Uh, and and they're just yelling, screaming oh, stuff, incoherent nonsense, to to the point where you're just you're standing there going. I, I don't know why I'm How bothered do I do up this. Here. Yeah. But you know, the bartender's still looking and going, you still got 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it just in, I did that show three times. Oh, you went, oh, back. You went back and it got worse every single really? time. It was just, what? you're, you're constantly like constantly just people walking in front. I, of I got one question. You're, for you're you. on the phone with the booker and you're like, all right, maybe it'll be better this time. <laughs> no. Oh, you know, comics, you go, Oh, uh, I got it. I time. got I it. Yeah. Do. This I'm time, funnier than this time I'll get time. it. Yeah. No, but the real question is who books that? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> is it still going on? It was, it... it was booked by David Tribble. <laughs> Are you familiar with David Tribble? No. Is he one of those Midwest bookers? He was, yeah, he used to have, it was called the Tribble Run. Oh, and it was, right. it was funny because he was one of those guys that was, he was so, I love this dude, but it was always weird because he's like, okay, Rodney, so what you do? Uh, you're going okay. Your first night, you're going to be Billings. You're going to go there. You're going to open. Uh, you're just going to. Uh, you only have. It's only an hour long show. So you're doing 15 minutes. The headliner's doing 45. Yeah. You're going to pick up 200 dollars. 125 of that you give to him. The other 75 dollars is not yours. You're going to give that to the doorman at the show in, in over in uh, Helena. Oh my god. You know, and then okay, then it when was you get like there, a domino effect. Yeah, of money. So you're going to get that seventy five dollars to that guy because uh, he's he. I owe him seventy five dollars. But For you're going to get, but you're going to get three fifty that night at the end of the show, and you're going to get it from uh, uh, her name is Christy, <laughs> and don't get the money from anybody else because Christy's the only one who's authorized to pay you. So you're going to get that that money. You're going to get three hundred fifty. You're going to give 50 of that to the headliner. Then you're going to get 300, but it's not all yours. Cause you got to send hundred of that to me, you know? And it's like, <laughs> oh yeah. Every, oh my you know, God. So, so by it's the like end of the week, what did you end yeah, up with? So by the end 75 of the week, bucks. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was 75 bucks in the chicken. Yeah. yeah right. like, oh, and again, weird. we ask who books that. <laughs> yeah. And it was just, that's it, they crazy. Would, the shows would just get more ridiculous. You know, they were in bowling alleys yep. and all kinds of weird places. And people oh, don't realize it. Like they hear when you're a comic, they think everyone's getting paid like Jay Leno or, oh, yeah. or, you know, it's like, these are the road gigs. This is behind the funny is yeah. these kind of shit gigs that people get. I had, I had oh, that yeah. once I was doing a show on a Friday and a Saturday and they said, you book your own hotel. And on oh. Friday night, um, when you get paid, he's going to give you cash to cover the hotel for Friday and Saturday night. It's in two different cities. And, but the guy is going to give you the cash yeah. Friday night. So I'm like, oh, what, whatever. I, okay. You gotta, you gotta just trust it. Right. What else what are you going to do? do? Yeah. Right. So I, I booked my hotel and for you're so Friday. Starved for work. I booked my hotel doing. for Friday and Saturday. I get there Friday night, do the show. It goes great. I close out the show. I, I go to up to the bar and I said, yes, yeah, so-and-so here. No, 
well, he's supposed to have my hotel money. Yeah, he left an hour ago. Yep. Did he leave an envelope? Um, yeah, right. Name? Yeah, I, I said, well, he's supposed name. to have money for me to cover the hotel. I don't know what to tell you on that. I said, you have his phone number? Well, get his phone number, right? Get him on, exactly. the, on the That's phone. Good. Yeah. Let's get and I the was there for this. another hour. Oh, yeah. Chasing this guy down. Yep. To, to scrape together the money so you know, it, it, my hotel code because i wasn't leaving i wasn't let, letting yeah. them close because i knew yeah. once i walked out the door yeah you're I never gonna never see getting it. it right yeah I yeah never getting up i I, I, I still i still to this day <laughs> whenever they pay me before the show i get a little you you want to hug them oh, yeah, yeah like, right oh, thank you I, I can't thank you enough well remember brian bowden when he was on the guy locked himself in the office yes Guy We're, locked himself and, in the office for an hour, and Brian's knocking on the door, going, "Come on, man, you're supposed to be paying me." You know. And when Brian oh. finally gets in the office, he says to the guy, "Yeah, you need to pay me." And the guy goes, "I'm not going to pay you." And, he, uh, he, and the guy told him, "If you don't leave right now, I'm going to call the cops." And Brian goes, "That's fine." And when they get here, I'll tell them the story, and they'll be on my side. So because yeah. I'll tell them because I was tell the comic them that, that I was a show. comic and you didn't pay me. Right. So if you want to call them, that's fine because they're going to be on my side anyway. Yeah. And and he goes, I just sat there till the guy paid me. Yep. I just was not leaving till he oh, till yeah, he paid it's, me. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean that that gigs. luckily that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen ton, often, but but listen. yeah, every comic that's been doing this long enough has dealt with that. I mean, I, oh, there was absolutely. a booker that used to pay. I'm not going to mention names, but if I, I didn't either. But there was a guy that used to book big name acts and he would book you for the big name act. And then all of a sudden that night it's like, and you're figuring, all right, guys booking a guy to do a 1700, a 1700 seat tent. You know, he's going to have some money to pay me. I didn't ask him how much I figured hundred to 200, you yeah, know, whatever, make it worth my time. And then you here. get there and it's like, Oh, you know, I didn't have the budget to pay you, but my wife works at Macy's and she gets these really, he, <laughs> does, does your wife like perfume? <laughs> I still have more fucking bottles of <laughs> shit perfume from Macy's upstairs. Uh, I'm, I, I, I wouldn't even honestly, I wouldn't even give these perfumes to my ex. This is the only business where you go back to the barter system. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's crazy. No other business would that happen. No. Yeah. You know what? Comedy. We're going to barter with you four fucking seashells and a couple what, of rocks. What time did you do? 45 minutes. I give you two chickens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I think it's it's sort of like a, I, I think uh, people who are addicted to gambling, I think comics were very close to that because yeah because we we're feel addicted like, to the yeah, stage okay, i know i know it makes no sense i'm going to drive for 14 <laughs> hours yeah to the middle of nowhere he's so right <laughs> yeah to headline a show for 125 dollars right for some reason i still think it's going to be worth the time cause yeah because i'm building my career right yes. oh Expand, yeah but you know, when you you're new this, but when you're new and they tell you well it's good exposure for you you believe that yeah. shit Cause you're like, oh, I'm gonna be in front of 17, 1700 people in front of Lewis Black, yeah. But like Bobby Collins said, it's show business. There's a business. Don't forget, side. yeah. Don't forget, yeah. there's a business. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, someone's making money, and I want my share. And I of want it. my share of it. Exactly. <laughs> and he he's absolutely right. Yeah. Hey, and he lives in a very nice house in California, and, and he I does don't. All right. <laughs> so exactly. He, mm -hmm. he figured it and out. We have day jobs too. He figured so. that out early on. So. Yeah. Rodney, what do you got coming up? Anything? Um, well, like I said, my my dry bar special is Which, uh, about to be released. And anybody uh, listening, the link is in the show notes. Check yeah, it out. Um, uh, next weekend, I'm very excited. I'm going to be in Helena, Montana. All right. They have a street called Rodney Street. Get out. Yeah. Very cool. And it's like an old historic street. And there's yep. like a big, they have a big festival every year celebrating Rodney Street. And yep. the people uh, running it this year are fans of mine. That's and awesome. they thought, what better than to have Rodney at the Rodney Festival? Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I'm going to be there. I'm going to do like a theater uh, the Friday night. And then Saturday, I'll be at the actual street the festival, festival and be doing. And so doing that's comedy. Billings, that's, uh, Montana. And that will, Hel Helena, Montana. Helena, Helena Montana. Montana. And that will be on the, the 20th, 20th and 21st. 20th and 21st. So this, yeah. this uh, episode will release on the 19th. So if you're listening from Montana, you need to go out and, and go to Billings yes. and come to this yes, show. Absolutely. Show. Go to Rodney Street in Billings, Montana, 
and go and Helena. see Rod. Helena, Helena, I'm sorry. You keep saying Billings. I don't know because he Helena. said Billings at first. Yeah, talk to, yeah. Is that where you're flying into? That's the big city in Montana? I don't even there, know. I, I've never even been. Helena, even tell you. Montana. There's Billings, Butte. Yeah, I know uh, Butte. I've heard of Butte. I used um, to do a joke about Butte. Butte. Yeah. Um, but no, you got to go see him. It, hilarious very very funny uh, one of my you're one of my favorites man when i i think who was it was it ed Wah and um well well both aj hey penny both yeah, of those guys, both of those yeah. guys spoke so highly of you and we Love neither of us had worked with you at that point and they still speak very highly and we were Love like and then scott had you on that the you know the theater fundraiser and i'm like oh my god he's so funny the crowd loves him he's having such a great you know, time and it was he, such an awesome show he, to be on he, with you he on. does he does a lot of shows out <clears throat> in the midwest but if you're in yeah. southern new england and you want a chance to see rodney he will be appearing at the bradley playhouse in our september show Oh, that's awesome. With Mark Riccadonna. Oh, that's going to be a Jody great Sloan. show. Jody Sloan. Holy shit. And Christy. Wow, that's a great show. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to have a fun night that mm -hmm. night. Mark Riccadonna is one of the greatest guys from New, New York, New mm -hmm. Jersey area. And he's actually the guy that got us on Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling. It's his podcast. And then they started their own channel on Twitch TV. So oh, wow. awesome, awesome guy. You're going to love him. Yeah, yeah it's going to be great. a really fun night that night. And oh, man. the crowds there have been phenomenal. So I can't wait for that show. That's, That's going to be a awesome. lot of fun. So um, Rodney, thank you so much. Thanks oh, so much I, for coming I on. Thank we you really appreciate night. it for coming back. Thank you for having me. This and I've been on your website and I and I'm definitely going to order my things and stuff T-shirt. The things and stuff <laughs> yeah. things and stuff t-shirt oh, awesome. I, I, yeah. I i'm i'm in love with that t-shirt i'm already. gonna get one too. things and stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah things and stuff <laughs> but for those of you uh watching those of you listening check out the show notes check out rodney's dry bar special and i will also have a link to his website so you can get your things and stuff yes. things and stuff uh t-shirt as well <clears throat> so um that's one thing too uh, just as a quick ps to this whole thing yeah uh, one of your videos one time people got in a heavy discussion about your t-shirt collection <laughs> yes. oh yeah yeah you have you have great t-shirt collection oh he's got the mellow yellow one oh with my his god face, that's he's awesome. always got some really classic great great t-shirts in case you're wondering, this is Captain Caveman. Yes, Captain exactly. Caveman he's wearing right now. That's a, that's a I classic. like the one on there that says you're nothing special. Yes, <laughs> like so exactly. I love it. Like anyone else would be selling one that says you're special. No, no, you're, you're, nothing, you're special. nothing special. Or oh, the one above it that says, okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> well, that was, the, yeah, that was the one from the, the, the video where he was far away and he came up and he goes, okay. I forgot what it's going to say, so go. Okay, bye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to work with you just so I could do the impression. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that would be it. great. If you're ever in the area Dueling and, and, you need, <laughs> and you need openers, you got yeah. two guys right oh, here that would be more than complimentary. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, wow. again, thank you so much, Ace. Yeah, I got uh, nothing coming up. Well, I got a couple of things coming up, but nothing nothing worth sharing. <laughs> no, I got some fundraisers and stuff coming up. Fundraisers so, and things like that. Um, but finally. we do, folks. Yes. In August, if you are in southern New England. First weekend we, in August. First weekend in August, we will be doing Behind the Funny Live at the Comedy Park in Cranston, Rhode Island. Well, go to thecomedypark.com. Oh, yeah. It's a new comedy club here in Rhode Island that has opened up. Amazing comedy shows that are going to be uh, coming up throughout the year this year. But we are going to be doing our show live on Friday and Saturday night. We haven't in booked, August. We haven't booked a guest, but we're going to have Doesn't a different. Matter. We're going to have a different guest on Friday and Saturday. Different one each night. You're going to see because, some stand up, yep. and then we're going to sit down and we're going to talk to the person live. With yeah, the audience. it's going to be like an interactive be show. Be sure to wear some depends because you're going to pee your pants and you don't want to leave the room. That's right, and that's going to be, the, right. and that's going to be the T-shirt we sell that night. <laughs> Be sure to wear depends because you you're gonna your pee your pants. Because you're peeing your pants. <laughs> you don't want to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave the room. Well, listen, folks. Thank you so much for listening. We really, really appreciate it. Again, uh, best way to help out the podcast is to give us a five star written review. Even better, tell a friend about us. If you enjoy mm -hmm. the podcast, please tell a friend and grow the podcast. Third thing is we do have our Patreon back up. We do have special content and some swag that you'll be able to get. 
Uh, for everyone that joins our Patreon, it's a flat fee, $5 a month. Go to patreon.com forward, flat, forward slash behind the funny and you will get a T-shirt of your choice, either 100% or to your point, And just let us know uh, when you join. And other than that, we will talk to you next week. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 